If you own an electric vehicle, it's wise to follow the 80% rule. But as technology evolves, infrastructure improves, and drivers become more educated about the ins and outs of EVs, does the 80% rule still matter? Well, you might be surprised. Welcome to another episode of EV Basics, where we demystify the oftentimes confusing world of electric vehicles. So first things first, what exactly is the 80% rule? Well, in simple terms, it's a two-part guideline for a better EV ownership experience. Essentially, this rule, and yes, I'm making air quotes because it's not mandatory like wearing a seatbelt, we're not joking with the TSA about having explosives in your underwear. I'm not making that mistake again. This rule encourages drivers to only charge their EV to 80% when possible. This is because one, DC fast charging rates almost always dramatically slow down after hitting an 80% state of charge. And two, in everyday use, capping your charge to roughly 80% can help prevent battery degradation over time. Clearly illustrating point number one is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. This all-electric hatchback can DC fast charge from 10 to 80% in a lickety-split 18 minutes, one of the best performances in the automotive industry today. But do you know how long it takes to go from 80 to 100 to gain the last 20%? Well, in our testing, it took 32 minutes, nearly twice as long as the 10 to 80% time. This curious phenomenon occurs because battery packs are a lot like movie theaters. When empty, it's quick and easy to take a seat, but as the space fills with people, it becomes more difficult to find a place to sit. As for point number two, numerous automakers recommend you avoid charging to 100% if possible because in the long run, this can help preserve battery capacity and undoubtedly help lower their warranty costs. Of course, this does not mean you should never go to 100%. Doing so is totally fine and frankly, absolutely necessary on some trips. It's just smart to avoid charging all the way to 100% every single day, especially if you don't need the range. Okay, so that's a refresher on what the 80% rule is and why it has traditionally been smart to follow. Next, we'll explore whether you should still use this as a guideline, but first, a word from Michelin, the sponsor of this episode of EV Basics. When it's time to replace the tires on your luxury heavy duty pickup, like the Tesla Cybertruck or Rivian R1T, get a set of Michelin Defender LTX Platinums. Aside from an ultra premium design that incorporates a velour sidewall treatment, these rugged tires are built for the long haul. In fact, the Defender LTX Platinum is designed to last twice as long as its predecessor and even comes with a whopping 70,000 mile warranty. Additionally, you get the Michelin Promise Plan, a 60-day satisfaction guarantee that also includes three years of roadside assistance. Currently, the Defender LTX Platinum is available in six different sizes for 20-inch wheels. Now, to find the tire that's right for your heavy-duty vehicle, visit michelinman.com. You can also scan this convenient on-screen QR code or, of course, hit the link in the description box below. And we thank Michelin for their support of EV Basics. So should you still follow the 80% rule? Well, the short answer is yes, but also no. So why the contradictory answer? Well, because it ultimately depends on what kind of battery your EV has. Nearly every electric vehicle available in the US today is fitted with a lithium ion battery pack that has some sort of nickel rich chemistry, often nickel manganese cobalt or NMC for short. Alternatively, some companies call this NCM, but it's really potato potato. The other chemistry option, one with some unique advantages and of course a few trade-offs, is called lithium iron phosphate or lithium ferrophosphate, LFP for short. 
These batteries are hugely popular in China, but LFP packs aren't terribly common in the U.S. right now. Only a handful of EVs offer them, including the Mercedes-Benz E Sprinter, as well as low-end versions of the Tesla Model 3 and Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now, reportedly, the next-generation Chevy Bolt will also offer an LFP battery to help keep costs low. Now, adding some context, according to a report from the International Energy Agency, in 2022, NMC batteries accounted for about 60% of the market, followed by LFP at a little less than 30. Now, around 95% of those LFP batteries found a home in light-duty vehicles produced in China, with BYD accounting for a half of that production. The more you know. Speaking of knowing things, were you aware of our EV Pulse membership program? As a supporting member, you make independent product reviews, EV how-tos, and vehicle testing possible. To show our thanks, members enjoy extras like custom emojis and priority comment replies. Plus, you get to watch new episodes before everyone else. Click the join link below to learn about our membership tiers and other available rewards. Of course, if you're already a member, thank you for supporting EV Pulse. Okay, so there are some important distinctions between NMC and LFP. We'll cover those in a separate episode of EV Basics, but arguably the biggest difference between these battery chemistries is how you charge. With NMC, in day-to-day -day use, many automakers strongly recommend stopping at around 80% to help prevent battery degradation. Now, this is a core part of the 80% rule, but with LFP, it's a completely different story. While less energy dense and generally not as good in high performance applications, LFP batteries should have no issues regularly charging all the way to full. In fact, car companies suggest doing just that. With the Model 3, for instance, Tesla recommends that you keep your charge limit set to 100% even for daily use and that you also fully charge to 100% at least once per week. If the car has been sitting for more than seven days, they also advise charging all the way up as soon as reasonably possible. Similarly, with the Mach-E, Ford says, set the maximum charge level to 100% and charge to 100% at least once per month to maintain range accuracy. For models fitted with an NMC battery, the Blue Oval recommends capping daily charging to 90% or less. So distilling all of that down, if your EV has an NMC battery, which it probably does right now, the 80% rule is still in full effect. If your ride's got an LFP pack, however, you do not have to worry about limiting your daily charging. So basically, NMC equals charging limit and LFP means filler right up. But either way, of course, the other half of the 80% rule still stands. You probably want to avoid DC fast charging all the way to full because it can take a long time to get that last 20%, regardless of the battery chemistry. And of course, to find out what kind of battery chemistry your EV has, I mean, in the US today, it's most likely NMC, but to verify this, read your vehicle's owner's manual and make sure to follow the manufacturer's charging recommendations. Next up, learn the ins and outs of charging your EV at home. There are huge benefits to doing this, but there are also some potential pitfalls. Click right over here to watch the episode of EV Basics where we break all of this down so it's super easy for you to understand.